In today's episode of the vlog, we're talking about Outlaw King, the brand new Netflix film starring Chris Pine as Robert the Bruce. Robert the Bruce is an outlaw. Guys, you know what? I was not going to do this. I was going to leave my reviews as they were. I've already posted three or four videos about Outlaw King on my channel. I've done a full review after watching the premiere last month. Outlaw King by Netflix is a great film, but there's a couple of really important things that I think we should definitely discuss. But first of all, I just want to say welcome to everybody. Thank you so much for joining in with my channel. It's great to have you here. Please do hit that big red subscribe button if you're new here, so you can keep in touch with all my content from now on. Join the clan and hit the notification bell. Outlaw King, right? It was released yesterday on Netflix. Everybody who has Netflix should now have it on your screens. It is available to watch. It is your weekend made up Outlaw King. I highly recommend you watch it. It is a great film. I stick by that. It is a great film. There's a couple of really important things that I think we should discuss, but it's great. I did a video yesterday comparing Outlaw King to Braveheart because that's really a natural thing that was always going to happen. Braveheart was the original film about William Wallace, the defender of Scotland, which also featured Robert the Bruce, the King of Scotland, in our first wars of independence. These characters were fundamental in shifting the future and the history of Scotland. Braveheart was an amazing, amazing production, amazing film, great actors, but it fell down on the history big time. It made Robert the Bruce out to look pretty bad in Braveheart. Outlaw King comes along on Netflix and is directed by a Scot, David McKenzie, with the aim of putting right a lot of the things that Braveheart got wrong. And as I've said in these videos over the last couple of days, I think it absolutely does put right a lot of the things that Braveheart gets wrong. The history is bang on pretty much, but I think having watched the premiere in Edinburgh about a month ago, I got caught up in the emotions of the film because it is a very emotive film. It makes you feel, especially as a Scottish person, it makes you feel like, wow, what an injustice that happened to Scotland and it's great that we had these saviours to come along to chase off King Edward. For goodness sake, it's in our national anthem and it is thanks to the characters portrayed in these films, Braveheart and now Outlaw King. It's only right that that film was made, that that story was told. As Outlaw King makes abundantly clear when it opens, this is an untold story of a Scottish hero. There is so much to like about it. But there's two main things that I think we need to talk about where the film is off. My main criticism, guys, centers, unfortunately, centers around our lead actor, Chris Pine. Now, I know, guys, listen, I said before in my early reviews that Chris Pine was great. I've had a chance to watch this film again, a second and a third time on Netflix as it arrived on our screens yesterday. And I just think there is something missing and it is really difficult to put your finger on this. There is something missing. There's always going to be a lot made of Chris Pine's Scottish accent, right? But I honestly think that is not the problem. His accent was not bad at all. I think there's a much bigger problem here. And it really centers around charisma. When I watched the film the first time, I thought he was pensive. I thought he was like playing this role of a quiet guy who thought things through. Because that was probably pretty accurate. Robert the Bruce was a strategist. When it came to war, he thought things through thoroughly and then executed, which was a different style to William Wallace. And that is what I thought he was portraying, but like, having watched it another time, I'm not so sure anymore. There just seemed to be something lacking. And I even think, and this is pretty dreadful for me to say, and I don't like saying it, but I, I kind of feel like the performance was soulless. And I like Chris Pine, so I feel bad in saying this, right? But Robert the Bruce, as much as he would have been thoughtful in his actions, he absolutely would have been a big character. And where is the oomph? The thing about Braveheart that made it so successful was Mel Gibson's larger than life character. The lead has to be this charismatic figure. And I just don't think he played that in Outlaw King. I mean, yes, there was a couple of big moments in battles when he got really angry and shouty, but here's the biggest thing about this. I think Chris Pine was actually outshone by another of other figures in this film. Is that something that's normal? I just think there was something about Chris Pine's performance that was missing. And I think there's something about that that kind of is a mischaracterization of the real man, Robert the Bruce. And actually to add to that, there's something that Chris Pine said on the red carpet that made me think and ponder this. I wanted to find out. <laughs> Specifically, what drove him, unfortunately, failed to do so. Do you feel you know him better now? No, no. He had done a lot of research on Robert the Bruce, a lot, a lot of research. He probably knows more about Robert the Bruce now than most people know due to his research for this role. However, even after all that research, even after playing the character, he said on the red carpet that Robert the Bruce remained an enigma in his mind. To be honest with you, we can actually forgive some of that because it was a long time ago and a lot of these character traits have been lost throughout the years or mischaracterized, but like for somebody playing that role and then not play it with all the oomph that you would expect from a true Scottish hero, 
is odd. I don't know guys, I'd love to know what you think about that. And that will lead me on to another part of this story that I want to talk about the other characters because that is vitally important to this. But I'll get to that in a minute because there's something else I want to talk about. This film, and I picked up on it on the premiere and I discussed it with you guys here and a lot of people have seen the film and have now agreed with me. So I think it's important that we bring it back up. There was something that felt rushed about this film. It seemed like we jumped from one scene to the other so quickly, we were jumping over and missing large parts of history. And meanwhile, major storylines had been totally erased from the story. For example, the spider in the cave. A fundamental story to Robert the Bruce, and I just really expected it was gonna be in. And apparently, some people commented that they actually saw the original premiere of this film at the Toronto Film Festival, and that scene was in it. Can't confirm that, but that's what people have said. And basically what happened with this film is it was released at the Toronto Film Festival, I think in August or September. That was the original premiere and the film was 22 minutes longer than it currently is on Netflix. Dave McKenzie was at that event and he felt the audience that something wasn't right. It was too long and he took the decision after that to go back to Netflix and say, listen, we need to cut this. So he cut 22 minutes off of this film. Whole characters were chopped out of the film, including by the way, William Wallace. There was somebody who played William Wallace in this film who is no longer in it that poor sword must be really upset. I do really understand that point though because William Wallace has already been portrayed in everybody's minds by Mel Gibson and anybody else coming along to play that role, it would have felt weird. And also it kind of takes away from the main character of Robert the Bruce. And then what I feel what we've got on our screens now is too fast and too jumpy. And I kind of got to the end thinking there is so much more in between the story that we have missed. There is so much more at the end of the story that we don't get to yet. And it just makes me think like, should this have been a series? And this is Netflix. Netflix are experts in doing series. They have recategorized what a series should be. And yet they made it into a film because they want to attack the film industry. And like, I don't know, Dave McKenzie is a great director. He's done some amazing films before. He's from Scotland, he knows his stuff. And it does make me think as well though, have they set Outlocking up to be something that could be a series because at the end it kind of left a lot of history open although they did try and cover it with text along the bottom about what happened in history it leaves it open to certainly more films but i don't know like i've said this to you guys before if you watch a movie and you're left wanting more is that a good or a bad thing i don't know i'll let you guys decide that but i would love to know your opinions of what i've just said about chris pine about the film not being long enough or about the story not being complete and wanting more what do you guys think? Have you seen the film? Let me know. Okay, right, and this leads me on to something really positive. What I said about Robert the Bruce, Chris Pine being overshadowed by other characters in this film leads me nicely to Black Douglas. I serve Robert Bruce. I didn't even know the story of Black Douglas, right? But I am so thankful to this film for introducing me to this man. I do not think I would have taken an interest in this character if it wasn't for the awesome performance of this character by the actor Aaron Taylor Johnson. He was absolutely phenomenal in this. It was so good, I was thinking, is this real? Is the story of this man and how he behaved, is it real? I looked it up and Outlaw King followed his story down to a T. As it showed in the film, he literally went to the King Edward and asked him for his lands back and was told where to go by King Edward. It really happened. He then really presented himself on his horse in front of Robert the Bruce on a hill, that really happened. He really did go back to his family lands, his family castle, and take it from the English on Palm Sunday, just as it happened in the film. They got his history really, really right. I think it's odd though, because his performance was so good and so mesmerizing and wanted me to know about this man, Black Douglas, that it totally took me away from the lead character, Robert the Bruce. He let off these blood curling screams, like for example, when he took back his family castle. Did you see that? That was absolutely bone chilling. He is definitely a man you would want on your side. And then we got to the main battle and like there was just a few bits in that were absolutely hilarious, thanks to Aaron Taylor Johnson's acting of Black Douglas. Did you see the bit when he said, what's my name. That is going to be a classic gif, I'm sure of it. I didn't know much about Aaron Taylor Johnson before as an actor. I don't know really what he's done before. I've never seen him before, but I want to see more of what he's done because if he isn't already a massive star, he will be. That was just such a great performance. Interesting though that it overshadowed the main character. But however, when you look into the history, Black Douglas was a man who literally took Scotland into these battles, led them, and was just as much of an important character as William Wallace was or Robert the Bruce. And I think the thing is, Scotland gained its independence eventually thanks to all these men combined. We seem to have a period when we had like four or five 
great men all fighting together on the same side at the same time in history and that is why Scotland eventually won. Any one of these men on their own might not have been able to achieve what they achieved but when you combine them all it was an unstoppable force that the likes of Edward I and Edward II were just unable to control. But Black Douglas, why did I not know about this man's story? As we saw in Outlaw King, Aaron Taylor Johnson's performance, he was bloodthirsty for the English. And basically throughout history for any enemy that he faced, he was ruthless, he was brutal and he was a massive character. When Robert the Bruce eventually died, right, this is nuts. Black Douglas had become a really close friend by then. He told Black Douglas he wanted his heart to be cut out and put in a box and taken into the Holy Land and taken onto battlefields against the enemies of God. And that is exactly what Black Douglas did. He had a steel chamber which he put Robert the Bruce's heart in and carried it around his neck. I really want to find out more about that story but like this man, he just loved a fight and he didn't actually make it to the Holy Land because halfway on his journey, he was in Spain crossing the land and he somehow came across another fight, another battle that he could be involved in. I don't know exactly the sides involved, but he became involved in a war, him and his men. He had Robert the Bruce's heart in this box around his neck and he pursued his enemy in a castle in Spain so hard that he got ahead of himself, he got ahead of his own men and ended up being isolated. And then he saw one of his other men in deep trouble, so he went in after him. This is a story of legend and I don't know if it's absolutely true. No he does but this is how the story has been passed down. In his last moments he grabbed the heart knowing that this was the end right? He grabbed the heart in the box and chucked it at his enemies and then he met his end on that battlefield in Spain. What a man! I kind of feel like I wish there was a, a Braveheart type of story just about him and Aaron Taylor Johnson should absolutely play him. So that has been an absolute positive of this film 100% like how good was that performance and how amazing is that character? I want to know what you guys think about that as well. Let me know down in the comments. And of course there was a lot of other amazing characters and actors that appeared in the film. James Cosmo, what a legend. He's just in every Scottish film and he always should be. And then there was Florence Pugh who played Robert the Bruce's wife, Elizabeth. She was amazing as well. I don't think she had that much to say. Like Robert the Bruce in the film, I think what was remarkable about Chris Pine's performance was how little he spoke throughout this film. And I think Elizabeth was pretty much the same. They didn't have that much dialogue. And a lot has actually been made about Florence Pugh and how that she is very much sought after in Hollywood now following our recent performances and hopefully this one will actually carry that through as well and she's going to be on to great things. I didn't know much about her either but like she did a great job. Also I think the girl who played Marjorie, the young girl from Edinburgh, she's going to go on to be a superstar as well, undoubtedly. But certainly the highlight for me is Aaron Taylor Johnson, the English actor who played Black Douglas. That character was endearing and like just so fascinating and I want to know more about him. And another absolute gem that came out of this film for me absolutely was the closing song, The Land of the Leo. It was absolutely beautiful. It gave me chills. It made me almost tearful. It was beautiful. The Land of the Leo. To the land of I have actually found it on YouTube and I've made it available on my Outlaw King playlist. The link for that is down below. This is my final review, guys. These were things that I thought I didn't really say properly and I had to say it and I wanted to say it. So that's why I'm doing this extra vlog today. But I really want to know what your thoughts are on all the things I've said and your reviews. So down below in the comments, let me know. I've got one more Outlaw King related video to do and that is a filming location tour because as I said, they use loads of locations that are familiar to me, very familiar to me. And I want to show people who want to come to Scotland how to get to them and where you should go. There are familiar locations to people who watch Outlander. And it was just so cool to see Scotland looking amazing. So I'm going to be doing that video next week, filming location tour of Outlaw King. But other than that, we're going to be back to our normal videos. Tomorrow is Sunday, which is Outlander Sundays. On Thursday, it's going to be the Sean show but listen go back and check my Outlaw King videos I've got like a whole playlist of them now and guys I want to announce a really special discount for all of you guys 15% on all of my merch. The link for that is all down below. And to get the 15% discount, all you need to do is type in the discount code Outlaw King, and then 15% will automatically come off of your baskets. It's free shipping to the UK, free shipping to America and Canada as well. But that is it for this episode, this extra episode on Outlaw King that I felt that I had to make. Thank you so much for watching. Again, I really appreciate your comments down below on your thoughts so we can have this discussion. Until the next adventure, I hope you have a good night, morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is wherever you are in the world. Take care.